Hey, what's going on everybody? Jeremy here. Today I'm going to be taking you to the park, not to play, but to do some serious work. We're going to be testing out the new GoPro time-lapse video mode. We're going to be looking at both the 4K video time-lapse mode and the 2.7K video time-lapse mode. And then we're going to be checking out this amazingly awesome 10K time-lapse. It's seriously amazing. And make sure to stay to the end because I have something new that I want to try out and it includes you. So that's pretty much it. Let's get into this video. Hey, so uh, I'm at the park now and I got the 4K set up on the camera and let's see how the time-lapse video mode works out. To set up time-lapse video mode, press the side setup button. Cycle through the modes until you reach time-lapse video. For this video, I'll be using the half a second interval or a picture every half second. After you press the shutter button, the time-lapse will begin. All right, so I just captured about 25 seconds of the 4K video time-lapse. I'm gonna stop it now and I'm gonna start a 2.7K 4x3 video time-lapse. So 4K video is actually a 16 by nine aspect ratio for the video time-lapse mode. But for the 2.7K time-lapse video mode, you only get the four by three aspect ratio. So it's like a box, which I think is a lot better because then you could uh, play around with the image a little bit. All right, so I got about another 25 seconds of the video time-lapse shot. I'm gonna stop it, head home and check out the footage. Hey, so back at the studio now, and I wanna check out the two time-lapse videos that I shot. We're gonna first take a look at the 4K video and see how that turned out. With the interval set to a half a second, you can see a smooth passing of the clouds. This mode automatically creates the video time-lapse and it's converted into 30 frames per second. Remember, since this is 4K, we can scale in on certain areas without losing much quality. All right, so that actually looked really good. A 4K video time-lapse done on the fly on the camera itself, no editing required. And the video bitrate on that video time-lapse was 60 megabits per second. So now let's take a look at the 2.7K video time-lapse in a four by three aspect ratio. Even though this mode uses the four by three aspect ratio, I still like it. Probably better than the 4K video mode. The whole sensor is used so you're able to capture more video vertically. This mode also converts the time-lapse into a 30 frames per second video. When using this mode, you can also scale in on certain areas, but it won't be as crisp as the 4K time-lapse mode. And the video bitrate for the 2.7K video time-lapse is 45 megabits per second. What I was also interested in knowing was how the video time-lapse works at night. Unfortunately, the only settings you get is the resolution and the interval. So let's see how my night video time-lapse looks in 4K. It actually looks better than I thought it was. I honestly thought that it was going to be much darker. If you notice in the beginning of the time lapse, it looks like the low light feature kicked in and brightened up the shot a bit. Again, for the other angle, it's surprisingly bright. We don't notice the low light feature kicking in here though. So for those of you wanting to use the video time lapse mode at night, you shouldn't be having any problems. Okay, now I want to get into this 10K time lapse shot in Brazil. It was shot using the Phase 1 IQ 180 and it's an 80 megapixel camera and it costs about $48,000. So this video is 10 328 by 77 60 pixels. It's insane, but it obviously it's scaled down to 1080p so it's playable on Vimeo. I don't wanna to show too much of the video, you'll just have to check it out for yourself. I'll have a link in the description. So what's fascinating about this video is that when it's scaled all the way in, it still looks crisp and clear, just as clear as it does when it's zoomed all the way out. 10K probably won't be popular for a while. It's just really expensive and there aren't any monitors or TVs that can play back that resolution at this time. Now, before I go, I wanna talk about this idea that I've had. There's many people on YouTube creating amazing GoPro do-it-yourself projects or tutorials and really cool GoPro edits. What I wanna do is feature some of your videos in my video kind of like how I did with the 10K time-lapse. I'd love for you to send me your GoPro do-it-yourself projects or tutorials, and it doesn't necessarily have to be related to only GoPro. It could be cameras in general, any kind of do-it-yourself projects. If I find that your video is helpful and enjoyable, I would definitely want to feature it in a future episode. But please, please, please send me the best of the best. Don't just send me anything. And if your video doesn't make it into one of my episodes, don't be discouraged. It might just be that the video wasn't relatable to anything that I was working on at the given time. I definitely would like to hear what you guys think about this idea. I think it's really great and I'm 
extremely excited to get started on it. And I can't wait to see what kind of videos you guys are gonna send my way. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful in some way. If you did, give me a like. That definitely helps me out a lot. And if you have any comments, questions, or a request for a video, you can leave that down in the comments section. And like I said, that's it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Now, last month, Ambarella released a press release announcing their new chip. The chip is called the Ambrella H1, and the specs are pretty amazing. Its predecessor, the A9 chip, powering the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, had some amazing video modes, like 4K 30 frames per second, or 720p at 240 frames per second. That's if you have the new update. 